Hello children. So in this session we are going to learn about another animal fiber that is silk. Children, when do we prefer to wear this silk clothes? Yes, it is on some occasions like marriages or when we offer rituals in our home. Isn't it? Yes. So why do we prefer these silk clothes? It is because the silk is very soft, light in weight, strong and lustrous fiber. So because of its nature, silk is generally preferred. Okay? So now silk is obtained from silk worm. Okay? Now silk is developed in China. Now because of the demand of silk, the silk worms are raised. So this process of rearing silk worms for obtaining silk, we call it as sericulture. Yes? So what do you mean by sericulture? The process of rearing silk worms for obtaining silk, we call it as sericulture. The silk is first developed in China around 5000 years ago. Children, there is some interesting story behind the discovery of silk. Once the Chinese empress while she was sipping hot cup of tea under the mulberry tree, she felt that something fell into the hot cup of tea. So later, she found that there are some threads that are coming out that are loosened in that tea. So later, she asked her workers to find out what it was and later they came to know that it was the cocoons that gave the silk thread. And this is how the silk has been identified and later developed in China around 5000 years ago. Now before knowing the process of obtaining silk, first we will learn about the life history of silk moth. So the life history of silk moth includes four stages. So the first stage is egg, the second stage is larvae or caterpillar. The third stage is pupa stage and the fourth stage is adult stage. First, the female silk moth lays around hundreds of eggs on mulberry leaves. It is because these silk worms feed on mulberry leaves. Okay? It takes almost three to five days for the larvae to get hatched out of the eggs. Now this stage of larvae, we call it as caterpillar. Now these caterpillars, they feed rapidly on these mulberry leaves and they grow in size. Now this continues for about almost 5 to 6 weeks. By the end of this stage, this larvae or caterpillar stops feeding and they enter into the third stage. By that time, this larvae starts producing a protein, a sticky fluid called fibroid around itself. This fluid hardens and then forms a cocoon like structure around its body. So this stage we call it as pupa. This silk moth continues to develop in the cocoon and finally it cuts open the cocoon to form the adult. First the silk moth eggs are sold to the silkworm farmers. Now these farmers they take care of these eggs under hygienic conditions providing proper control temperature until the caterpillars are hatched out from these eggs. Now they feed these caterpillars with freshly chopped mulberry leaves. Now these caterpillars they rapidly feed on these mulberry leaves and they grow to a full size. The end of this caterpillar stage they stop feeding and they start forming cocoon around themselves. Now, once they enter into this third stage, that is pupa stage, the moth continues to develop itself in the cocoon and then it cuts open the cocoon and it flies out. This is how it generally happens. But before this stage itself, that is before the moth cuts open and then flies out, before this stage itself, these silkworm farmers, they will sort out these cocoons based on their size, color, texture and then they will put them into hot boiling or boiling water. This is mainly done to kill the moth inside the cocoon and to obtain the continuous thread of silk. 
So later the cocoons are placed in hot and cold water immersions so that they can reel the silk or they can obtain the silk filaments from these cocoons. So this process of getting the silk threads from the cocoons we call it as reeling of silk. Later the silk fiber is spun to form silk threads and these silk threads are over to form silk fiber. Now this silk fiber is used for making a high quality or high value dress material. Children, you understood right? This is how the silk is obtained from the silk worm. The technique of making silk in India was developed around 1700 years back and mulberry silk is the main variety of silk produced in India. For about almost 90% of silk comes from states of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. There are several species of silk moths that are available. They are present but whereas in India, Bombex mori is a species that is being domesticated for producing silk.